Hello, my name is Heather Kay. The two videos I watched for this assignment were the Feeding the World by Louise Fresco. She did it in the February 2009 TED Talks. And the other one was by Jamie Oliver in the 2010 one. And he got the Wish Prize for that. And it was teaching every child about food. Uh, the first one I'm gonna analyze is the Feeding the Whole World. And basically the essence of what it's about is how bread uh, can essentially feed the world. Not the artisanal, fresh bread you're gonna buy from Whole Foods type of thing, but more so the Wonder Bread. Um, she went on to first quote Gandhi, saying, um, to those who have to go without two meals a day, God can only appear in bread. I guess to a lot of people, um, bread is very important, and it's not something that we really think about a lot because it, we just have such an availability and accessibility to it. Um, she also goes on to state how food is about respect and I think we can personally respect each other by allowing everyone the access and affordability to it and that can be done through bread as it's easy to manufacture and produce in a high quality, um, high volume production. Uh, we actually need to do this to be able to feed 3 billion people in cities alone. We can't use farmers markets. We can't just rely on farmers. They only make about 1% of our U.S. population. They're the, we're relying on such a small amount of people for such a large quantity of food, and we can't be doing that. Um, her solution to this is that we need to produce more biotechnology, such as robots that can um, identify wheats from other types of grasses. We need to rely on smarter and more social aware uh, technology instead of trying to go back to artisanal breads and uh, locally sourced food. It's a great idea but it's not practical for this day and age as back then that's what they had to do. But with the advancement of technology, we're able to reach a broader array of people and therefore we can produce more food at a cheaper cost and it's allowing other people access to it and they can actually afford it. We can't do that just through small farmer markets in cities, it's not possible. We is an extremely important crop, and it was the first crop that we did domesticate. And I think that's why she thinks it's such a big, it has such an ability to influence other places. Um, one of the norms that we associated with it was from her um, place on the stage, she was physically able to connect to the audience and the viewers with food. She actually did that by baking on bread, baking the bread while she spoke to the audience and at the end sharing with them and encouraging them to think about where it came from, where they are on the food chain, and imagine it as a bond between them and the farmer who actually grew it. Um, mentally, she a norm that we think of and that she also emphasizes is that we she associates bread as a main staple to the US, except for you know jokes around about people who are on California South Diet beaches. South Beach diets, um, but everyone eats bread at some point. Um, it's just so cheap and easy to buy. You throw it in your freezer, it lasts so long. You throw it in your fridge, it lasts a couple more days. You, it's just on your basic grocery list of things to buy every week. Um, I think that we, as America, value it by people want to be able to buy food at an affordable price and by manufacturing it in things like Wonder Bread, companies like that, um, they give us the availability to access that. Um, also, we're just able to buy bread wherever. Um, we can go to supermarkets, gas stations, we can just turn the corner. Wherever we are, if we're hungry, we're just able to go and find food that we can buy. By going back to small local farms and just only buying from local sources, we can't do that as easily. It's not gonna be accessible everywhere. We kind of just take that for granted and we're abusing that power a bit. And I think beliefs that Americans have about this is that everyone should be allowed to have access to cheap, affordable food. Uh, not just us, but we think that for the whole world. We think that there's no reason that everyone can't be able to buy bread or make it themselves easily. Um, we should also all be able to work to make a living However, we've kind of become entitled and 
we think that we should have a job that fits our needs and our criteria and because of that we haven't really focused on the farming and that's why we're at that one percent of farmers in the company or in the country that's it and we really should be trying to help them out and encouraging them so that they can produce a uh, higher volumes of food at even better qualities and more quantity of it and we need to be supporting them with the advancement of social and environmental technologies um, personally I think I see a clash between um, what people believe and what they think about this um, about trading local food for highly manufactured food a lot of people are going into the more um, organics now and they believe they should buy locally. They're supporting local businesses and helping themselves and their communities. And in a way that's true, but they're also being detrimental to themselves because we can't just uh, live alone on that. We can't just live off of that. Um, it's actually not going to be cheaper in the long run. You're going to be paying more for that because it's going to be a higher labor cost. You're not going to have machines being able to do it. You will be giving more people the ability to work, but it's going to be at your cost, and you aren't going to be able to export that type of food as well. Um, a great example she used was that she's from the Netherlands, and by only growing what's local to you, you can't export it. They can't have oranges there. It's not natural to their climate or their environment. So we're going to be taking away a lot of stuff from other countries by only baking fresh bread for ourselves. We can't import that to other islands that are actually now living off of that because it's so cheap and easy for them to buy. Um, however, there there's a little bit of congruence as people believe that we should all have access to food and support everyone again. It should be affordable. Um, also that there was a point that we think, oh, bread is completely linked with obesity. We should stay away from carbs. You know, bread isn't the food of the future. It's something old. It's not something that we can all survive off of. It's not gonna solve, cure world hunger. But it's not completely true because a lot of the obesity links that we have with it is through the additives, not the natural form of the wheat and not the nutritional value that comes from it as a staple. Um, a lot of Americans, I think, would believe with her point about being able to feed the world through the scientific advancements. Um, she did a, ask the audience how many people would prefer uh, sliced white bread to freshly break, baked artisan bread, and only two people sort of raised their hands. Um, and why that was, was mainly because people have the image in their head that's an honest, real way how our ancestors made the bread. And it's just not realistic in this time and age to be able to produce everything locally and organically. We have to outsource from other places. It's how our economy survives. It's how we interact with each other. Um, it also gives us different ideas of different uh, cultures and how they eat and we're influencing each other. By taking that away from them, we're affecting their lifestyle and how they're able to eat and actually putting some of them in starvation by not being able to send them the food that they can easily afford. And that's the evaluation for the first essay, uh, first video. The second video was the Teaching Every Child About Food by Jamie Oliver, and this one, I really fell in love with his points about it because I think it is really important to educate children and try to fight obesity. Um, one of the norms that I think we can all associate with and that everyone kind of believes in that I picked up on in the video was that obesity is a big issue. It's just not one that we really acknowledge anymore. It's there. We know it's an epidemic, but it's just in the background there. We acknowledge it, kind of try to hide from it, though, a bit. But everyone tries some form of diet at one point or another, and we don't really know how to combat this issue or where to begin with it. So we just kind of try to sweep it under the rug. Um, at the beginning, he did an audience participation and asked how many people had kids, nieces, nephews, everyone raised their hands. 
I think it really hit home that we all are affected and that we're all affecting each other because of this obesity and food epidemic that we're not understanding how to treat and use food properly. Um, the main point that he got across was that all those people, they've cut the lifespan of their kids by 10 years, that they're gonna, their kids might die before they do because of the way they've been encouraging them to eat. Um, two thirds of the room was statistically overweight and obese. And within the time of his uh, lecture, four Americans would be dead and not just through, you know, hit and runs or murders or suicides, but through um, their diet, through the way they eat, their obesity, giving them different diseases caused by their diets. Um, and the thing is that I think a norm is that we just hear these statistics all the time. They're there, they're in the graphs and the charts, they pop up in the news, but we're immune to them because they're just numbers. They're not the actual faces of people until you see someone die from it or until you see some, even just uh, The Biggest Lose or something like that, a show where you actually physically see these people trying to combat something that's very emotional, very stressful very prevalent to our society. Um, another norm we have is that obesity affects all of us in our health and finances, and we recognize that, but we don't completely acknowledge it. However, he hits it home where he acknowledges that 10% of our health care bills are due to obesity, and that is more than what smoking is now, and that used to be the highest. We're paying towards $150 billion dollars a year towards that and in 10 years that is set to double to 300 million it's really not just affecting our finances that we're looking at but it's also affecting our health as diet related diseases are the biggest killer in the u.s and it's not just here it's a global problem it's affecting england and india japan china all these places are coming up right behind us not as high of course but they're also, we're influencing them as well. Our country is affecting the way that they live as well because we're such a country to look at. We're a model country and these other places are kind of trying to copy us a bit and we're leading them down to, to a path of destruction. Um, yeah, heart disease, cancer, stroke, diabetes. These were uh, the on the top six of the top 15 lists that are the top killers in the US. And all those four are diet related, are causes from obesity. And that's just because these kids, we grow up, we don't know what certain foods are. We don't know how to cook with it. We don't have basic life skill strategies that other people before us, three generations before us, easily had and didn't even think about. Their weight was completely different. How they lived and interacted with each other was different because they bought fresh, produce every day. They didn't buy processed, manufactured, just garbage. I think values that the American people have are, they value their life. This is something that's completely affecting it. I mean, it can literally kill them and it is killing people every day. I think that they want to be healthier and they don't just want to be healthy. They want their families and their friends to be healthy as well. It's just something that we hold close to us. And it's just something that we kind of expect to happen, and, but we're not doing anything about it and it's not happening. I think a lot of beliefs that we have are that children should be eating healthy and that actually schools are responsible for it. Kids are in school 180 days out of the year. They eat breakfast and sometimes lunch. Sometimes they have snacks there. They're really getting a lot of their food from schools, and parents are thinking that schools are responsible for it, whereas schools are saying the rest of the time they're at home. The parents are influencing how they eat, and that's true as well. Um, I think there needs to be a balance on both parts. Uh, they each need to hold themselves reliable and accountable for it.